What's going on today everybody? Hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, today we are working on my wife's traverse again. Her idol has been getting worse over time and she's having problems with just cruising down the road where it will like surge. Like kind of drops in RPMs a little bit. So, leading me to think that there's a misfire in the engine. Now, I worked on this a little bit before and I found out that cylinder number three is having slight little misfires. What that means is we'll check out number three. Now I checked out number three and I swapped the igniters from three to uh, four to see if the misfire would switch to see if it was the igniter or it was a spark plug or wiring. So I switched it to four, the igniter, and nothing happened. Still was three. So the igniters were fine. So then I pulled the spark plugs out and I found out that the spark plug was gapped to a .062, which factory is .043. So our spark plug needed a little bit of love. We got new spark plugs, we're gonna install those, but we're also gonna do an idle relearn on her car. Now, I have a diagnostic tool that lets me do it. Just check a box and then it just does deletes the file for the uh, idle relearn. So I'll show you what the process, I guess, is and see if we can fix her misfire issue that she's having and her idle issue that she's having. So without further ado, I got a new spark plugs and I got a new air, fi or air filter for her car. So we'll replace those and hopefully it'll fix it. If not, then we know it's not a niter and it's, and it's not um, spark plugs. And that lead us, leads us to wiring. So... We'll go ahead, install these, and see if we can fix this. If not, we at least have a decent path on where we're going next. So her idle has actually gone down and has become a lot better than what it was. She sent me a video where it was going all over the place. Now, this one's still bumping up a little bit, but it's not like it was. It was bumping like two, 300 RPM. Now it's like, 50 to 100 RPM. So that's not too terrible of a thing. Now when we look at the data, and I go ahead and give it revs, you can hear it. Misfiring right at 1500 RPM. And there you can see cylinder number four has had some misfires. So cylinder number four is jumping up there. Now each one just says that it had a uh, misfire and it goes down and it counts by ones and goes up, it keeps counting. This one's in history. So this one keeps a record of all of them. So that way I know that, okay, I've had what, 14 misfires um, within this cycle. So I just started the car, I've had 14 misfires and that's me sitting and holding the RPMs right there at 1500 and you can tell Right at 15, I'm getting lots of pops. You can hear them out the backside. And you can kind of feel them in the engine where it just hesitates a little bit. So, we'll look into cylinder number four. One thing that I forgot to mention is when I did swap the igniter over, I actually pulled the spark plugs out and checked both the spark plugs to see if one was gapped higher than the other between three and four. And I actually swapped the whole system. I first started out with just the igniter and that didn't change, but I swapped the whole system, spark plug and igniter from three to four and four to three. So that means that it's probably a spark plug that I'm having problems with. And that spark plug was the one that was gapped to 0 .062, and it I bent it back over and got it within spec, but the probe was also pretty worn down. 
That's what's leading me to think it's sparks or spark plugs. So we'll go ahead, we'll change these spark plugs again and see if we can do the relearn and get this car running right. I remember why I haven't changed this air filter in a while and it's because it's got six screws on the outside of it that are Torx and they're long and only two of them are kind of easy to get to. The rest of them are kind of a pain. But they are, there are six T25 screws to hold the air box on and then you've got your air filter that's sitting over here and it's got two hose clamps on it. Now I undid the one that's connected to the throttle body and it made it easier for pulling everything out this way. And since I was getting in a throttle body anyways, because I wanted to look to see how dirty it was, it's pretty dirty. So we'll go ahead and clean everything up and get it back into the car. One thing that I should say is this red pin for your MAF sensor pulls out. So that'll actually pop out. And then there's a little black piece in there that needs pushed down to actually get the send or the wires off the sensor so that's very important and then put it back you just lock the red piece back in there so make sure that you go ahead and remove this red piece pull it back so you can actually push this black piece down to pull the math off that's pretty gross in there so we'll go ahead and give that a good cleaning there we go it's not perfect but it's a lot better than it was. Well, let's start by taking these igniters out. And to do that, you can check out my other video. Um, I do have a more comprehensive way to take the spark plugs out, but we'll go ahead and I'll just give you a quick overview. 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter bolt, igniter, and then you've got your clip. Pinch your clip, clip comes off. Take your 10 millimeter out and the igniter will come out. Remember to get to this front one, there's a 10 millimeter bolt in the back, and then this guy just pops right out. And then you can get to this one, take your screw, your bolt out, twist it 90 so the bolt is actually, where you put the bolt is actually facing this way, and it'll come right out. And then all your back ones you can actually get without taking the intake off. So, we'll just lift up on it, and you can hear the pop. Lift up on it, pull it out. Take your socket with an extension in, and then you can put it on your spark plug. Take your wrench, put your wrench on your extension. Pull it out, take your wrench off, take your extension and the spark plug out, put your new one in. And you can do that for all three. If you get the clips off, the clips are back there really hard to see but there's the clip but you can pop this up turn it comes out number one take the clip off this one's the harder of the three but you just give it a pop up and it'll twist around the AC line right there you can see the bracket this way all three of them out from the back all three in the front are still in it can be done. So now I've gone through and I've put my idle reset and I've pushed my reset. It's in reset mode and it's idling and it's slowing down. So now I've got to wait for three minutes for this to idle. I'll turn it off for a minute and then turn it back on for three minutes. You can see how sporadic that the idle is after doing a relearn. This is what it was like when she was having problems before. So, got our relearn learn started. We're gonna give it our three minutes here, and then we'll give it the 60 minutes off, and then another three minutes of runtime. Now that's better. It's still bouncing a little bit, but it's not quite as bad as it was. And then we've got no misfires. So that's cool. And then if we take it up to 1500. We still have no misfires. So we had some bad spark plugs. 
That is cool. We fixed it. It's not stuttering like it was either. Well, after changing the spark plugs, I decided to do a transmission um, adapt reset as well. Might as well do the throttle reset and transmission reset at the same time. Hopefully it'll help. Um, we're trying to fix the surge with her transmission too, so if I can learn what both of them need to do at the same time, might be better. So, we got those spark plugs installed, we got the air filter installed, we reset it, now it's time to go take it for a test drive and let it learn. We'll see how well it works out. Anyways, I'm gonna get out of here, you enjoy the rest of your day, I know I am. Take it easy everyone, peace. Gotta love it when you're making a video and your neighbor's like, nah, let me hit you with them copyright free beats. Air blower, you bet. Lawnmower, coming up next. <laughs>